Hey man, what is going on with everybody? It's your boy Eric, aka Young God, coming to you live in the in the green dungeon today, giving it to you real raw rugged. And usually I let my guests introduce themselves, but only when I got a legend on camera, I gotta get him an introduction, <laughs> man. So let me introduce his brother right here, man. So we, we, we got a we got a legend on the other line, you know what I'm stop saying? It, stop it. A Haitian on the line right now, man. Yes, yes. Boy from the East Coast, you know what I'm saying, man. A uh, uh, a faithful black brother on the line, you feel me, man? We got my no, boy. Don't we got my boy Rick on the line, man. We give it up to my boy Rick, man. What you, what you got going on today, man? I'm doing good. I appreciate the nice intro. You know, definitely thank you for having me. You know, um, and I'm glad to be here, man. Thank you for having me. What's up? What's going on? What's hey, fine? man. So I could start it off on how this even came about. So. Uh, okay, let's do it. Like okay. last year, I'm on his website or whatever, and we watch wrestling okay. together on the website. So watch a lot of wrestling, and in between wrestling, you got commercials. And USA just love to promote this Temptation Island thing. This was the yeah. first season before it started. So we like, bro, why do they keep promoting this random trashy reality TV show? <laughs> keep yeah. promoting it. But then we like, you know what? They keep promoting it. When the first episode, of the first season come on, we gonna all watch it. And if it's trash, then whatever. But if it's fire, then we gonna keep watching it. Never in a million years did we thought we would be obsessed with Temptation Island, but man, Temptation Island might be the best reality TV show on the land right now, man. Yeah, <laughs> it might yeah. be the best reality yeah. TV show. So at the end of the first season, I told everybody, I said, yo, who y'all want me to interview? I'm going to interview a person each season. I'm only interviewing the legends. So they said, first okay. season, we interviewing Javen. I said, all right, I'm going to interview Javen, yeah. man. Second okay. season, I said, who y'all want? They said, man, you know you want the God Rick, man. So I'm like, let me get my boy Rick on this bitch, man. So, yeah, man, had to get you on here, man. Thank you, thank you, man. I'm glad to be on here, man. For real, for real, man. I appreciate the love. So let me tell you how the season started for us, man. So the first episode, we seen you, uh -huh. and we like, oh, this nigga finna cheat. But this, this nigga finna yeah, go yeah. crazy, boy. Because you had the swag of a nigga. You look like you was so ready to get in that house and get goddamn balls deep in some coochie, boy. I was like, boy, this... This nigga finna go crazy. So when your old lady leave, I'm like, oh, this nigga finna act the fool. But you get in the house, and the complete opposite happened. And you shocked us, man. You showed us why black man, you know, you, we a faithful bunch, man. So we got to salute uh -huh. you for that before we get into anything. So I salute, agree. I man. That. I salute. That. That, that was kind of the mantra going into, you know, Temptation Island was uh, black men don't cheat. So shout <laughs> out to Charlamagne and uh, Duval being, uh, you know, the, 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 the people that's, for, you know, just just running with that movement and everything. So hey man, shout shout out to Lil Duval. He is a, a Duval native. I'm a Duval native. Shout out to the okay. uh, shout out to Duval. But yeah, I thought it was uh one thing that I told Javen when I interviewed him. I'm always uh, cautious and I'm always looking out on how black people are represented in TV because mm -hmm. I feel like you know a lot of times they get a black person there, they gonna make them look like a fool. You know what I'm saying? They go exactly. they already want a fool now or whatever. But bro, through the whole season, I'm not even saying I'm interviewing you. Like just G shit, you kept your composure. You st yeah. you was a stand up nigga. Like every time you would be on scene, your scene would end. I was like, bro, this is a solid young man right here. I don't know this nigga, bro. I'm like, I'm bet this is a solid young man. And you handle every situation like a solid that. dude. And one of the one of the scenes that really got me was the one where um Casey, he's he's uh he just seen his girl cheating. He going through it, and you know the old girl Medina, she's trying to talk to you. But you like, hey, I'm trying to I'm trying to help my man. I'm trying to console him real quick. I thought it was some solid shit because you could have been on a nigga and be like, oh man, I don't care. I'm, I'm about to get to the coochie real quick. But you, yeah, you was exactly. a solid nigga. So I mean, is that something that's like you know, is that something that's like in your DNA? Like you, you know, you you yeah. make sure to do solid shit like that. For sure, for sure. Like you I mean, like back home. Like, you know, I have, like, a real small circle, and everybody around me kind of stays solid and just kind of accountable, you know? And I'm just always, I'm the type of person, caring person, that I'm always going to help hold down my friends. I'm always going to hold down my friends. And sometimes it could be to a fault where I'm, I'm just trying to help out everybody else but yeah. myself. But in that moment, I feel like I needed to hold down my guy, Casey. I done seen some shit that I went through. And I understand what he went, was going through. So I just wanted to be there, hold him down, and also let Medina know, like, yo, this is the type of dude that you're going to get. If you get me, this is the type of person you're going to get. You know what I mean? So I hope, you know, um, after all of that, you know, she kind of was like, okay, Rick's heart is in the right place. And I wasn't, you know, I, I later apologized to Medina, you know, raising my voice at her and everything. But I was just real emotional and just felt really strongly about how I felt, you know, in that moment. You know, I needed to be there for my friend. And, you know, I, I, we could talk later. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you know, Medina was definitely on my body. <laughs> but, you know, 
like, <clears throat> we, we can take care of that later, you know? But right now, I got to be there for my guy. One of the, like, main things I realized about the girls, because, like, when that first happened, she didn't like the way you wasn't giving her attention, right? Yeah, and I realized yeah. a lot of things about, uh, or a thing that I realized that happened with a lot of girls in there, it seems like, I don't know, it, they kind of seem self-centered almost, because mm -hmm. I remember uh, Casey, I forget, but the dude, the white girl in there was crazy. What's her name? Uh, Peyton, I think her name was. Yeah, the Peyton, Peyton. Yeah, hey, yeah, man, yeah. They, that girl has some issues, man. So, like, every time some shit would happen yeah. with her, bro, yeah. like, I think Casey was on some shit, like, yo, like, I got a girlfriend at the end of the day. I ain't really trying to cheat or whatever. And she just started yeah. going crazy. Like, you don't care about yeah. my feelings. You don't care about me. <laughs> and I don't know. Like, you've been on that island. You feel like there were a lot of girls on there that seemed kind of like to not get the picture that y'all was still in a relationship and it wasn't yeah. all about them. Did you feel that? So I, I felt that. Like, the girls were all kind of respectful and still understood we had a girlfriend. But at the same time, they were there for, you know, a purpose of making a connection too. So they kind of... They, the, the singles were in a hard position, you know. You're there to, to, to try to, you know, make a connection with somebody, yeah. knowing that somebody has a relationship. So it, it was really hard on them. So they kind of had a straddle the line of, okay, what's what, what what am I am I being disrespectful or you know what I mean? So there was just a line they kind of had a straddle, and some people was kind of like, hey, all for it, and some of them was was you know kind of straddling that line of just playing. You know, and some of them wasn't with the shits at all. And that was Casey. Casey was not with the shits with, you know, somebody jeopardizing his relationship at all. You know, so at that point, um, Casey <laughs> just blew up at her. But, I mean, you know, it, it, it's a hard it's a hard time for the single. I got I to gotta feel for him, you know, at, for a little bit. A little bit, I got to feel for him. No, I feel you. I feel you. Difficult I mean, position. I feel you. I mean, you can feel for him. I ain't feel for them at all. I was like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> these bitches is wilding right now. I'm not going to lie. I ain't feel for them, man. <laughs> But no, for real, but no, for real though, like, did you watch uh, season one? No, to be honest, I didn't even watch season one. Wow. So that was, that's what kind of tripped me up. Like, I watched maybe part of the first episode of mm. Temptation Island. And I wasn't really into, like, you know, reality TV relationship shows, you know? So, but my, my first time being on the island, I was like, what the fuck did I get myself into? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what I got <clears throat> myself into. These dudes is talking about what happened in season one. I'm like, yo, what? What are y'all talking about? Who's who's this person? Who's Jaden? Who's Kristen? I don't know who's who. So <clears throat> I wish I did, though, to be honest. <laughs> I'm be real. I wish I watched season one. But it is what it is, you know. It, it was a great experience. I got to say that. Did you ever get to chop it up with like, anybody from season one? I didn't get to chop it up with nobody from season one till after the season. So <clears throat> when I got back and um, Javen reached out, Evan reached out a few times. And those would have been the two guys that really been just showing me love and just like, yo, Rick, you know, you held it down and just kind of giving me good words of encouragement and just advice, just, you know, how it was, you know, leaving the island and what to expect after the island and shit. So, you know, those, those are real solid guys right there, Evan and Chris, um, Evan and uh, my man Javen. You know, I never told Evan before, but yeah, Javen definitely is a, is a solid dude. Yeah, so yeah, shout yeah. out to Javen for sure. I, I rock yeah, with Javen. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like I said, you you two, I think everybody, because like mostly the, the 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 thread that we're in and we're talking about wrestling, where there's a lot of black people. So I feel like yeah. we, we we gravitate to the black people more. Like let's see what, let's see what the black people are gonna do. And hey, man, yeah. two season two seasons in a row, y'all didn't let us down, man. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I gotta because even Gavin, Gavin held it down, man. I was rocking with yeah, Gavin yeah. heavy, so even Gavin held it down. So the black man on there, man, is, hey. Salute, man. Salute, yeah, man. Yeah. Is is that your first time ever being in like a TV uh, spotlight? Yeah. Because I know you do commercials. I mean, I know you do like modeling and stuff. So I didn't yeah. know if you ever been I on model, TV. And I've just done background. Like I done been background. Like you know, in a couple movies, um, I got spotted a few times. A couple people done, you know, screenshot of me, sent yeah. it to me, and everything. But I never had any no major speaking roles. So I'm not no actor or whatever like that. I'm just a model and. <laughs> You know, and, that, and that's what I do. And then, you know, I do some work on the side, you know, marketing, <coughs> consulting and shit. But I didn't know what to expect when I was going on Temptation Island, bro. I'm out there like, yo, what is going on? I'm <laughs> seeing cameras over here, cameras over there. We mic'd up 24-7, cameras everywhere. So this it was just a big, huge production, you know? <coughs> it was just huge. And it was just a lot to take in, you know? And dealing with the elements, it, it, it takes a lot on your mental, bro. So I've never okay. been on a set like that, and it always makes me wonder, like, how is it, how hard is it to be authentic and be natural when you got a camera, a boom yeah, mic, yeah, yeah, and yeah, a yeah. guy? How, how hard is that? Well, I mean, <clears throat> like, 
one thing with modeling, I, you know, some transferable skills that I brought over was okay. like, you know, I could just be in the camera and not pay attention to it. You know what I mean? So that's basically what I took over, you know, having all like shit that's going around us. You know, you have like one camera on us and then we have another one behind us. Yeah. You know, they're getting all these crazy angles and everything. And then on top of that, you got like producers right there by the cameraman too, kind of like, you know, um, just asking you questions just to get more out of you, just to, you know, just to get, uh, 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 peel back the layers yeah. of your answer. So that's a lot to deal with. And then on top of that, it's hot as fuck in Maui. <laughs> the sun, I, this is the first time I've ever put on sunscreen. So I'm over here just having sunscreen all, you know, all, all over me and everything. So there's a lot of shit that we got to deal with, but you know, I was always told and taught to never let them see you sweat. So that's how I handled myself. You know, and I, I was just like, let me just stay cool, calm, and just <laughs> think before I act. You know what I mean? Yeah. How hot was it out there? It was hot. Like, the thing is, it's like 85, <clears throat> between 80 and 90 degrees. Mm. But the difference between that is, is it's like the sun is on top of you. We're mm. in the middle of the ocean. It's an island. So it's the first time I've ever had to wear sunscreen, ever. It's the first time I never felt the, the sun like that, that intense. So uh, you got the heat element, and then we're not sleeping much. You know, we're sleeping maybe four, five, four hours a day, five hours Jeez. tops. We're going to bed at three thirty, having to wake up at seven thirty in the morning. And then, mind you, Maui is an island. There's fucking, fucking chickens and roosters cockadoodling at four or five in the morning. So I'm getting maybe two hours of sleep. So, bro, that shit was hard. That shit was tough, bro. You know, it was definitely mental. And always, like, uh, another thing about Temptation Isles that I forgot to ask Javen when I interviewed him is, like, what's, uh, like, is there any entertainment there? Like, can you have a phone? Is there a TV? Like, what is there out there? Nah, bro, <clears throat> you, you, you really might go crazy out there if you're not <laughs> just, like, in your head, just kind of just, just solid. You just kind of just kind of understand, like, yo, I'm out here and I have to make the best of it. I don't have a phone. Mm. You don't have internet. You don't have access to TV. So you don't really know what's going on in the outside world. So the only entertainment you got there is what you make of it. You know what I mean? And the people that are there. You know what I mean? The guys that we, you know what I mean? The other guys I live with and also the singles. So they may, they did that on purpose. So we would have genuine connections. And when we would have issues, we would, you know, bounce them off each other as opposed to going texting our friends or making a phone call back home to mom. Like, mom, going through this. Yeah. Nah. <clears throat> you don't got mom right now. You're going to deal with it right now with your castmates and the single ladies. So and that's what they do. They know what they do and they're smart. <laughs> was there any news that was happening in the outer world that when you came out, you was like, wow, that happened while I was in there? I didn't even know that happened. Yo, shoot, <clears throat> shit. Drake dropped like a couple songs. Shit. So what was this? I'm trying to think, what was this? This was. So this was between June June 15th to like June, July like 17th. 2019? 2019, okay. yeah. So during that time, I think Drake dropped like Money in the Grave or something. Like oh, that. So, okay, right? okay. That's when that dropped. And then I think like a lot of the NBA, I'm big on the NBA. Okay. So a lot of the big trades was going on. I didn't even know Kyrie got traded till I got back. Mm. Dudes is like, yo, bro, he even been traded or he, he signed with another team weeks ago. So it was just when we got back from the island, it was just like we were playing catch up. It was kind of like we kind of been, we were locked up. <laughs> yeah. And it was our first day home. And, you know, so. It, it was definitely a crazy moment when I got back home. I was just like, wow, just trying to assimilate to regular Everything's life. going on. Yeah, I mean, that's a perfect transition because I did want to talk about sports. Before I get into basketball, though, didn't yeah. know if you were a football fan or not because I well, know you're a Boston. I'm a fan, man. Hey, man, I'm a Patriot, Patriot fan, too, so I, we're finna yeah. we're share a bond right now, man. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, yeah. What, what's your you thoughts, know, man? Hey, the thing is with the Patriots, like, they're in a transitional phase. They got to figure out what they're going to do with Tom Brady. You got to sign him. Or he gonna walk, but I'm with them regardless. You know what I mean? You can't win them all. Six six championships. I went to a championship parade every year when I was in high school. Not too many people can really say that. It's a fact. So, uh, you know what I mean? You can't win them all. Man. I'm, a, I'm a Celtics fan, as you can see as yeah. well. So, you know, I'm just a diehard Boston fan, man. Shit. And, I, and you say you went to wrestling too, man. I, I used to be wrestling back. I used to be in the wrestling back in the day when it was WWF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, the you know when they had like moves, they had. Uh, we see Ultimate Warrior, yeah, and, 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 uh, Razor Ramon, yeah. They had, you know, uh, when, when Shawn Michaels and, 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 and was in the tag team crew, you yeah. See the, uh, you know, Ric Flair, you know, all of that. That's me. That was my era. 
Hey man, shout, shout out to the WWF days. But yeah, I was not expecting uh, that Patriot loss, man. That that that, that caught me off guard. Um, it, it was it, it was painful to watch, man. I was like, what is going on with our offense? It was the offense that was tripping. It was the offense. And and it's crazy. I I can't say it's Tom Brady. I don't think it's him at all. I think it's the wide receivers. Niggas can't niggas can't open. They can't get open at all. Not getting open at all. And it's it's, it's trash. Yeah, you know what I mean. I wish they I <clears throat> wish they didn't pull the trigger with um, AB as quickly as they did. They should have let that yeah. whole situation play out and then proceed. Once it plays out, and then you you know you do what you need to do. Discipline them. Get rid of them. Whatever. But they did pull the trigger too quick. Too quick. Man. Way too quick, man. But it uh, is what it is. In, in basketball, you uh, you rocking with the Ops. I'm not going to lie, man. I'm not a Celtics fan at all. You rocking you know, with the Ops. Who's your team? Who's your team? I'm a big Heat fan, man. The Heat okay. and the Celtics have had many rivalries this past yes, decade. Yes. You know what I'm yes. saying? And, hey, the Heat looking amazing right now. So, it's looking like his finner, the, the rivalry finna spark right back up. You know what I'm saying? Yep, so, yep, yep. hey, man. Also, before we get into uh, this rivalry real quick, uh, something on a good note. I see you cool with Jalen Brown. I was, uh, was yeah, curious. Yeah, yeah. What's, what's, what's up with that? That's the homie. That's, 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 you know, that's my uh, good friend. Um, you know, as you can see, I'm, I'm rocking the juice. This, this is his merch. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, that's a real good friend of mine. I'm real close with the family. Um, I do some work and, you know, work with him and his brother. His okay. Brother Q. So, um, been rocking with him ever since his rookie year. And, um, you know, that's a good friend of mine. So, you know, yeah, shit. Before I even went to Temptation Island, I asked him for some advice. You know, <laughs> even though he's younger than me, but you can never be too old to gain some yeah. wisdom and advice from somebody <laughs> old, from younger than you. So, He's somebody that, you know, I consider a good friend of mine. And make sure you vote for him, you know, All-Star. How'd you link up with him? Um, you know what? Randomly, I met him at a Gucci concert. Really? Gucci concert. And Gucci is his fan. I ran into him twice. I ran into him with the Bad Boy concert. And it's crazy because I'm cool with the, you know, with the whole Bad Boy clique, you know, a few of those guys as well. But um, I ran into him. I snuck backstage at a Gucci mm-hmm. concert. And, you know, like... You know, I didn't want to look out of place. You know, I'm on my phone acting like I'm supposed to be backstage. And then, you know, I ran into his brother. And his brother, me and him had a common uh, 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 friend. And, you know, we started chatting. And it's been like, we've been cool ever since, you know. So, um, shout out to Jalen Brown. Shout out to my boy Q Brown. And shout out to Gucci. Gucci, yeah. Gucci. That's their people's too. Real good people. So, shout out to, you know, the whole clip. Hey, man, never in the world would I have thought Juice, I mean, Gucci was linked to fucking Jalen Brown. That's crazy. Oh, so, yeah, because that's a, they're both from Atlanta. So, ah, he is from yeah. Atlanta. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. so Jalen was that guy. He had the Juice back in high school. So, he used to have a whole bunch of rappers pull up to his games. You know what I mean? He used to have trouble. Uh, Goo Wop used to pull up. Uh, all, all the Atlanta stars used to pull up to his games in high school. So, it's crazy. Now he's in the league. A lot of the, you know... Uh, 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 rappers that are from Atlanta, they show him love mm. because you know they show they show Jalen love when he was in high school, so he returns the love back. So it's just a situation where Atlanta supports their own, and it's dope to see. So hey man, b- before I get into my uh, my Boston Celtics bashing, Jalen Brown is fire. Uh, he's fire. He's Jalen Brown is fire. I can't even hate on him. Him and Jason Tatum, they were, those are two of my favorite young niggas to watch. Like them boys, they can yeah. ball. You know what I'm saying? Are you a yeah, hooper yourself? Yeah, yeah. I used to hoop, and it's funny that you just said that. Like, I just came from basketball practice. Wow. Um, I coached middle school basketball. I used to coach, you know, women's basketball on the, on the collegiate level. So, you know, I love ball. I'm around basketball. You know, I work with a couple uh, ball players, doing some consulting with them, the branding. So, I'm around basketball, man. So, I'm a big hoop fan. So, like, one-on-one, you're, you're, you're pretty decent. I'm, I, I, I'm all right. I get a bucket. I'll give you a bucket. Okay. I mean, you, how about yourself? You got some games? I mean, I was going to say, I'll probably wash you. That's, what, that's where I was going at. I'll probably do you nasty. So, yeah. You, you got games? You got games? Uh, I've, I've heard it. You know, that's what they say. You know what I'm saying, man? Hey, hey. We'll, we'll see. We're we'll, going to have to lay some. I'm going to have to set that up, man. You know what I'm saying, man? But no, I think something's, I saw, I think something's interesting that uh, you said you do is like consulting, brand marketing, things like that. Like, I was yeah. curious, like, exactly what is that about? Like, like what, are you, what are you doing for these uh, clients that you have? Yo, so the funny thing, like, you know, I model and everything. So when I come across, um, you know, these jobs that I model for, I make the connection. So I'm going to be talking to the yeah. entertainment marketing guys. I'm going to be talking to the branding people. And I make, you know, I, I make a genuine connection with them. And, you know, when I go to these games, I have certain access. I'm, I'm just not being a spectator. When I'm at these games, I'm connected, yeah. you know. And, and, you know, I'm networking and, 
you know, I have sometimes access to certain, um, 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 you know, events and stuff where I'm just there and I just make the best of it. So I, I'm a people person, so I just use that opportunity to connect, connect the dots, and that's essentially what I do. So I may know somebody that plays for this team, and I might know this brand that might need, you know, some somebody to be an ambassador or whatever. So, you know, I'll plug, plug, plug away and just connect the dots, and that's basically what I do. So, you know, um, that's kind of what I do. Um, with uh, um, Jay LeBron's brother, Quentin. Quentin kind of, you know, he's a marketer and connects the dots as well. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm a hustler, man. I'm just out here moving and grooving. That's what I do. Hey, man, two important things about what you just said. One, for anybody watching this right now that wants to do anything, you have to network. Networking is probably one of the most important things. Like, niggas think I'm just some goofy nigga in a bonnet. It's like, hey, man, underneath the bonnet, nigga, I got a brain, too, nigga. You got to, yeah, yeah, exactly. when you when you go to these places, bro, you have to, you can't just be here and be starstruck. Like, oh, my, I'm around Gucci. Yeah, yeah. I'm Because if you would have been starstruck, you'd be like, that's Jalen Brown. That's Gucci. But you actually exactly. spark up a conversation with your brother and not look at you. You you cool with one of the, the best young players in the NBA, and that's making you yeah. get moves. You know what I'm saying? Are you at this place? And you you know what I'm saying? That's very very smart. You can't just be the person that's oh I'm gonna take a picture with this person and post on Instagram. Nah, that's not gonna nah, get you nowhere. That's not that's nah, not gonna get you nothing but some likes at all. Yeah, it is. You know, <clears throat> and essentially, like I'm not I'm not even though like I may be a fan, I'm not fan. Out. You're not fanning out, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not being a fanboy. I'm, I'm, I'm essentially, I see myself being a counterpart of theirs. You know what I mean? You know that's how I kind of see myself. You know, I see myself being a counterpart of people that I may look up to and somebody that's doing more than me. So, you know, I just, just kind of position myself to just, you know, make genuine connections. You know, sometimes there's people that come with a lot of fake shit. People can smell fake shit from a mile away. If you come with, you know, genuineness and a good heart. And in, in pure intentions, you're good, you know? So that, that, that's all the advice I can give. That's and that's why network, I want... Network. Yeah, I about to say, that's why I want to interview you, man, because I felt like just... Because I was like, I'm not for sure. Like, I would assume that Temptation Island is pretty real. But I was like, even if this nigga's acting, this nigga need a goddamn Oscar because you just felt so <laughs> genuine and real through the camera or whatnot. And I mean, back on the marketing thing, and not gonna lie, man, hey, you could, you know what I'm saying, plug some niggas in for your boy, you know what I'm saying, man? Hey, man, that nigga might need that, man. You know what I'm saying, man? Hey, bro, you know, over here chatting, you know, there's nothing feels forced here. We're good, we're good, man. If there's anything that I may come across that fits you, you know, you should already know. I'm gonna put you on, and then I will hope you do the same for me. And that's usually what the situation, and that's usually how, how it works, you know. And um, just, just that's just basically what it is, you know. Like I, I'm, I'm not a hater, you know. My time gonna come, and you know, you just gotta sit, be patient, and be ready. Bro, that's I don't it. know. I don't know if they got them. Uh, the, I don't know if the uh, the Temptation Islands like. They, they, they like scout is like a, a real nigga or some shit, but they scout with nothing but real niggas. I'm lost. Like, I ain't never seen a TV show scout this many real niggas. I don't know if the white people just got an eye for a real nigga. Like, all right, and, 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 <laughs> I don't and know what it is. Sometimes, and it's funny sometimes because, like, on some shows, you might see a black dude and he's gonna be the corny black guy that, you know, that <clears> that might be a little, uh, let me just be disrespectful, a little Caucasian. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, a little cool. He cooling it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah little bit. <laughs> keep it but, real. But, but that's, but that's not me, you know. I'm just, you know, shoot. Like I told, it was crazy every day when I was at Temptation Island. I'm like, bro, even though this shit might be crazy, we going through crazy, fucked up shit on the island, and, and 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 it's all mental, and we might hate it, but like this is still beautiful, bro. Like I grew up, my house, I got fucking mice in my wall, and mm. I'm in a fucking mansion, mm. and I'm seeing an island over here. I'm seeing an island over there. I'm like, this is crazy. I'm blessed. I gotta be. I'm blessed. You know what I mean? Because, shit, a, a month ago, I was in a crib with mice in the fucking wall, you know what I mean? So it's just like, you know, I just got to think of making the best out of every situation and learning and just growing and just, you know, making good connections and just... Just keep it moving, man. That's, that's basically what it is. Hey, man, shout out Temptation Island for finding three yeah. solid black men. Like I said, you, Javid, yeah. Gavin. Sol I mean, you know what I'm saying? You know Gavin better than me, but he seemed like he was a, a solid nigga, too. You know what I'm saying? So I got to rock yeah, with that for sure. Cool, um, yes, but, hey, man, before, I don't want to keep it for too long, but I do have to ask this question because this kind of threw me off. I know you from Boston. Uh, yeah. I, I know you black. I, that seems like a rarity out there. I don't know too many niggas yeah. out there in Boston. But what's yeah. even more rare... You're a Haitian in Boston. I'm from Florida. And all this all this Zoe's either in Florida or they in New York somewhere. Didn't know they were in Boston. So is that like a big community out there? Yeah, there's a big community out here. It's funny, like people in like Haiti, they only know a few places in the States. It's it's, it's Miami, it's New York, 
in New York, New Jersey, and Boston. Mm. So there's a big community of people in, in, in Boston. <clears throat> my father's big in the Haitian community. Um, you know, so I'm just really tapped with my culture, you know, where I'm from. I'm in tap with the Haitian culture in the community. First Black Republic, you know. So, you know, just get familiar, you know. Like, that, that's basically what it is. You know, I'm just, I, I just got to be real about who I am and where I'm from. And, you know, and that's just basically what it is, man. It's the Fest. Shout, shout out to all the Zoles. All the Zoles in Miami, Florida, all of that. Hey man, shout, shout out to all the Haitians out there, man. I, I said this a long time ago. I don't know if you're, you're a Haitian, so you can agree with this, or you can disagree or agree with this more. But I feel like... Like, okay, so 10 years ago, people that were Haitian, they would get bullied yeah. and they would get, like, picked on for being Haitian. It wasn't cool for being Haitian. You know who I think has made it cool to be Haitian now? I think Kodak Black has made it very cool to be Haitian. And niggas, ha- he has put Haiti on the map. You're a Haitian, so you can speak a little bit better, but what you think? Well, <clears throat> I, I would say the first person that really put Haiti on the map was Wyclef. Wyclef, of course, Wyclef. I gotta I got say Wyclef. That was my era. I'm 33. So... Like, Wyclef was that guy, you know what I mean? And, and after him, I want to say, like, maybe I was, I could kind of agree with Kodak, because, you know what I mean, Kodak, he, 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 he got the young, he got the young niggas, young niggas lit. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? so, so Kodak's that guy, I heard, you know what I mean, he had a crazy buzz in Florida before we even heard about him up here. And I know that because I have family out there. They're like, they were talking about Kodak back way before. So, shouts out to him. And you got young guys like Zoe Dollars. Yeah. You know, shouts out to him. He's connected to some people I know out here in Boston. So, you know, like, hey, Haitians is doing it. But there's a lot of Haitians in the entertainment business that's doing it, too. You got my man, Gene Eli. He's from Boston. He's Haitian. He plays Issa, Issa Ray. He's a Ray's brother in, in, in the show, Insecure. Okay, okay. So, you know, so we, we, we all sprinkled around doing some things, man. But, you know, get familiar. But, yo, there's a lot of black people in Boston, bro. We really? New edition? Come on now. New edition. New edition Boston, Boston right? niggas? What? What? Come on now. New edition. What? Crazy Bobby Brown. Mike Bell. All of them. I didn't know Bobby that. Bobby, they from Boston, man. Wow. OP. Orchard Projects. I'm, I'm from Cathedral. I went to high school Cathedral. They referenced Cathedral in the, in the movie on BET. That's up the street for me Um, from my high school. I've seen the movie and everything. I did not know. They're from Boston, bro. Roxbury. It's connected too because, because look, I'm from Jacksonville, and the dude who played Bobby Brown in that movie is from Jacksonville. So shout out to that right uh, there. Uh, uh, Woody. Yo, Woody, you from Jacksonville? Is he Haitian? I heard he's Haitian. Is he, I don't know, bro, like that. So I don't know, but he might be. He could okay. be. He is from Florida, uh, so he could be Haitian. But I don't know, bro, like that. But he could, he could be. Okay, well, shout out to Woody. It's funny. I did some background in in, in the, uh, the Bobby Brown biopic. I mean, you see it for like two seconds though, but you know how to throw that in. <laughs> no, nah, what you doing in there? What you doing in there? <laughs> Man, I was just a dude. Just I, I was actually Bobby Brown's uh, 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 one of his roadies. I was one of his really? roadies. So I had like a Bobby Brown shirt and a hat and everything. You know, I had to put on for Boston. Like it was crazy. Like I had to. I made sure I went to Atlanta just to do background for that because I felt it was crazy that like you know somebody from Boston is getting a movie done about yeah. him and somebody <laughs> iconic as Bobby Brown. You know, and then New Edition. Like the New Edition movie. I thought that movie was was dope. Like, that shit brought me back to, like, the Jackson 5 movie. Yeah. Right? Okay, when I watched that. Like, that was a great <clears> film, man. They from Boston, man. So, shout out to my city, man, Boston. Hey, shout out to Boston legends. Shout out to Florida legends yes. out there, man. Yes. I don't, don't want to keep Florida it for... Legends. I don't want to keep it for too many, too much long. So, if you got anything else before we, got, uh, before we get out of here, man, let it be known. Oh, uh, man, you know. Shout out to you for having me. You know what I mean? So, so big up yourself, all right? <laughs> and, and I got and I got big myself up. And make sure y'all give me a follow on, um, you know, Instagram, Rick Flair. And, uh, yeah, continue rocking with me. I'm going to give you a follow right now as we speak. Before we even end this yes, interview, yes. I'm going to make sure I give you the follow, man. It's Rick yes, Flair on Instagram, got, right? Yes, R-I-C-K-F-L-E-U-R, Rick Flair. Hey, man. And there it is right there, man. I just, hold on. I just, just follow the brother. Y'all go follow the brother, too, man. You know what I'm saying, man? Hey, yeah. you got all the young legends following you. You got Darius Baisley following you, man. You, you out here. Before he, before the he draft. went to the NBA, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I met him before when he was in high school when he came to actually Jalen Brown's um, um, uh, a networking event. Mm. Jalen Brown throws a networking event for all, um, you know, incoming rookies and guys, second-year guys. And it's a chance for them to network with agents. I've got a chance for them to network with people in, in the game. 
So I just use that opportunity to make connections. So um, that's a real good event he has every year, you know, in Vegas for the, the newcomers and everything. So I got to meet Darius Baisley. So, yeah, I'm connected with a couple guys. You know, you know a couple guys. So, yeah. Well, shout out to d Bays, man. And everybody shout watching this, everybody watching this, man, shout out to y'all. And to next time I say what I mean, I mean what I say. Haters going to hate, players going to play. Y'all holla at yeah. your boy.